Today we are going to look at algebraic simplification and undefined fractions. Algebraic simplification. Question number one. Simplify 1 minus s squared all over s minus s squared, given that s is not equal to 0. You will recall that if s is equal to 0, we will say that this expression is undefined. This was why I told you that algebraic simplification and undefined fractions are related. Now let's look at the solution to this one specifically. Our solution. We will write our uh, 1 minus s squared all over s minus s squared. We have done factorization previously. So this calls for factorization. To factorize the numerator, it is equal to 1 squared minus s squared all over s minus s squared. I've written this for you to know that 1 squared and 1, they are the same. And for us to see the difference of two squares in this expression. So that, that will give us 1 minus s and then we have 1 plus s. And everything here will be all over s that is common. We have 1 again minus s. You cannot see that 1 minus s and then 1 minus s in the numerator we cancel. So this eventually will leave you with 1 plus s all over s. Sometimes also s plus 1 all over s because they are commutative. So this gives you the solution to that problem. You have simplified the given expression and the answer is equal to this. Question number 2. Simplify x minus 7 all over s squared minus 9 times s squared minus 3s all over s squared minus 49. Here our solution, we take the numerator of the first term, which is s minus 7, there's nothing you can do to that, that is this, the lowest term of that. Then over here we have s squared and 9 will be written as 3 squared, it's a perfect square. Multiplying this by, we can factorize the numerator there, s is common, now leaving up with s minus 3. We close that bracket. All over s squared. 49 again is a perfect square. So 7 squared. From there, we move on to s minus 7. Then you can apply the difference of two squares to give you s minus 3. And then you have s plus 3. Beautiful. Next is, you leave your s, because this is the lowest term of that, you have factorized that. Now we have s minus 7 here, and then we have s plus 7. Well done. Now, what do we do next? You will now notice that s minus 3 and s minus 3 we go, and so we are left with our s minus 7 and s minus 7 here we also go. And the numerator, you have only s remaining. At the denominator, you have s plus 3, and then of course that will be multiplying s plus 7. And this is the factorization, simplification, sorry, of the given expression. Let's take a look at question number 3. If 1 over p is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, all over a minus b, and 1 over q is equal to a plus b all over a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Come on. Find p all over q. Solution. We take the first case where you have uh, 1 all over p actually is equal to. Factorizing the numerator, we have uh, a plus b all squared. And everything here, all over a minus b. Recall that this means we can write a plus b and then a plus b. And this is all over a minus b. Nothing cancels, nothing cancels, but therefore we have our p will be equal to the inverse of that expression, which is a plus b and then a. B. So that is the first case. Then we take for Q, 
where you have 1 over Q is equal to your A plus B everything here we divided by A minus B or squared alright now this of course is the same thing as saying A plus B all over A minus B times A minus B and of course our Q will be equal to inverting that expression we now have A minus B into A minus B and everything here will be divided by A plus B now we have P all over Q therefore becomes our A minus B all over A plus B and then A plus B becomes times the inverse of Q becomes A plus B all over A minus B and then A minus B you will now observe very carefully that this we cancel this and then this we also cancel this so you are left with 1 in the numerator all over A plus B times A minus B therefore our uh, P all over Q simplifies to 1 all over A plus B and then multiplying A minus B and uh, from our earlier discussion this becomes A squared minus B squared but preferably that is a better solution because you have simplified it to the lowest term example number 4 Simplify a square minus 9 into a square minus a minus 2 all over 4 minus a squared into a square plus 4a plus 3. Solution. I want you to know that one of the best way of solving this problem is to have a good knowledge of your factorization method or principles. Everything we are doing here is about factorization. The first term there, a squared minus 9, can be written as a squared minus 3 squared. And then, of course, we can also factorize the second term to mean a minus 1, and then uh, a, uh, a plus 1 and a minus 2. Then, of course, you will now factorize write this as 2 squared minus a squared. And then this will also factorize, this one is factorized to become a plus 1 and a plus 3. Your power of factorization is necessary for solving problems involving algebraic simplification. Now here we go we can take the a square minus 3 square we factorize that the difference of 2 square will become a minus 3 and then a plus 3. That is it. And then of course, continue with that, you have a plus 1 and then a minus 2. You have completed the numerator, then go to the denominator. This becomes 2 minus a into 2 plus a. And of course, a plus 1 into a plus 3. You now see that some factors we go a plus 3 and A plus 3 we go. A plus 1 and A plus 1 we go. And then of course, you realize now that we have A minus 3 at the numerator and A minus 2 divided by, I can write 2 minus A as minus into A minus 2. This is the same thing as A. So we now multiply that again by uh, 2 plus a is written as a plus 2. They are commutative. Now in other words, we now have a minus 2 cancelling a minus 2. And the numerator, you will now have a minus 3 all over minus a plus 2. And this can also be given to us in terms of we don't allow negatives values or negative sign at the denominator. See this one is positive plus divided by minus will be minus. So you can have this as a 
minus 3 all over a plus 2. Again, we can go further to say that this becomes minus a plus 3 all over a plus 2. We can see how another shade of a by writing 3 before minus a. So we can even write this one as a 3 minus a all over a plus 2 as the case may be. So there are variations of bringing out the answer. And that is why in the most exams, you should be technical enough to have the variations of your solution. Because an examiner can decide to give any of them as the options in the provided options. Let's take a look at question number 5, which is an example 5. But to simplify 4a squared minus 49b squared all over 2a squared plus 5ab minus 7b squared. Alright, now each question here has a special way of uh, solving it. And that is why I am bringing some specific examples that we uh, tutor you on how to deal with the right simplifications of various types. Now if you look at this one here, take the numerator, it's always better to take this step by step, hop, step and jump. That's what I used to say to my students. So we take the numerator and you can do what? Factorize it. Of course, you notice that this becomes 2a and r squared and then this becomes 7 B and R squared. Beautiful. You are now having a difference of 2 squared, which you simply will write as 2A minus 7 B, and then you have 2A plus 7 B. Well done. That's it. Now, what is the next stage? We take our denominator 2A squared plus 5AB minus 7 b squared. Let me use this to also explain to us how to actually carry out quadratic factorization. Quadratic functions factorization. Here, as we used to say, the coefficient of a squared, you bring it out, and then for the b squared, you, you bring out also the coefficient of b squared here, which is minus 7. You multiply them, you are going to have a value here, and that value is uh, minus 14. Then you create or find two factors of minus 14 that when you add them together to give you plus 5 and that is minus 2 and then plus 7 and actually this will give you uh, your plus 5 this is equal to plus 5 so you will replace the plus 5 in the expression by minus 2 and plus 7 though I will write 2a squared instead of plus 5 I will write minus 2ab and then plus 7ab. I'll bring in your minus 7b squared. Now you cannot pair this and you pair this. If you pair this one, what is common there is 2a and you have a minus b. Good. Then the next one you pair this, 7b is common and you are left with uh, a and then minus uh, uh, b. That's now what you have. Good. And looking at this, two terms, a minus b is common, so you have your a minus b, you take it out, and then open the bracket again, you take the coefficient of a minus b, which is 2a, and the coefficient of a minus b, which is plus 7b. At this junction, you have also factorized the denominator. Now we are going to couple them together. So, coupling them together, we have our nu uh, numerator is 2a minus 7b, and then you also remember we have 2a plus 7b. Now this will be divided by the denominator which we have also factorized to be a minus b and then you also have your 2a and then plus 7b. That's beautiful. Now you are realize that this and this will go. What are you left with? You are left with 2a minus 7b. Everything here all over a minus b. And that is the simplification of the given uh, algebraic uh, function. Example question number six. We have here simplify
a minus b all over a plus b minus a plus b all over a minus b. In this very case, before you can factorize, you need to find a common denominator. So our solution, we first of all find a common denominator, and the common denominator here is a plus b, and then a minus b. Then of course, this we cancel this, leaving with a minus b. So we have a minus b times a minus b. We have minus, the next thing is a minus b, we cancel a minus b, leaving you with a plus b, put it in bracket, times a plus b. Now, you take the numerator and open up the bracket to have a squared minus ab minus ab will give you minus 2ab and then what next you have? You have minus b times minus b will give you plus b squared. Then of course over here a squared times minus minus a squared. Then we have a times b is ab, b times a is ab, that is 2ab times minus minus 2ab. Then b times b is b squared times minus will give you minus b squared. Everything here all over a plus your b and into a minus b. Alright, what does this translate to? You discover that a squared minus a squared is gone and then you also have that b squared minus b squared is gone and what is left in the numerator is minus 2ab minus 2ab and then of course all over your a plus b and then your a minus b if you look at the numerator something happens there what is common? minus is common 2 is common and uh, a b is common therefore we add in their common term so we have minus 4 a b divided by a plus b and then a minus b we cannot go further than this, and this is the simplification of the given algebraic function. Question number seven. That's example seven. Simplify one all over one minus s squared minus one all over s minus two, this is by minus two, minus one. Our solution goes to us. First and foremost, let us bring Okay, let's take this. This is your 1 all over 1 minus s squared minus 1 all over this expression is written as 1 all over s squared minus 1. So that this will become 1 all over 1 minus s squared minus 1 all over s. s squared is the denominator here, so 1 minus s squared all over s squared and though and this translates to 1 all over 1 minus s squared minus remember this is division so we invert becomes s squared all over 1 minus s squared beautiful so we can go on now and have this as the common denominator here is 1 minus s squared so this becomes 1 minus uh, s squared so what is the result of this? The answer is obviously equal to 1. You see, 1 minus s squared, all over 1 minus s squared. And the answer is equal to 1. Just mere simplification, and the answer just came out at the end. Example question number 8. Simplify 1 over s minus 2 plus 1 over s plus 2 plus 2s all over s squared minus 4. Solution. There's a key expression here. That is this expression here, which is the same thing as writing s minus 2 and s plus 2. In other words, the LCD of this factor, of this uh, fraction, will be s plus 2 and then s minus 2. So, in other words, well, we now use this as our denominator, so we have our s plus 2, 
and we have our uh, x minus 2. x minus 2, we can say x minus 2, leaving off with x plus 2 times 1 is x plus 2. Plus x plus 2, we can say x plus 2, leaving off with x minus 2 times 1 is x minus 2. Then we also have plus x squared minus 4. We cancel b because this is the same thing as x squared minus 4. So we have 1 in that case. And then 1 times 2 x will give you 2 x. So if you find further, you now have that your x plus x is 2 x, x plus x is 2 x, plus 2 x is 4 x, plus 2 minus 2 is 0. So you are left here with x plus 2, and then you have x minus 2. This is the simplification of that uh, expression, attraction. Example number 9. Simplify 1 all over x squared plus 5x plus 6 plus 1 all over x squared plus 3x plus 2. Our solution. Observe that the denominator of each of the fraction is a quadratic expression which is factorizable. And so that's first thing we have to do is to factorize each of these uh, expressions then we will be able to bring out the least common denominator. So here we go. We have our x squared plus 5x plus 6 is actually x plus 2 and x plus 3. That is it. Then we also take our x squared plus 3x plus 2 and then again that becomes our x plus 1 and then we have s plus 2. Beautiful. Looking at these two, the factors in both cases, we have that our STD, which is the least common denominator, will therefore be equal to s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2 and then multiplying s plus 3. Taking each of the factors. Now, we can therefore now find the values by saying that our x squared plus 5x plus 6, we divide into these factors, and what you have left will be x plus 2. Because the factors of x squared plus 5x plus 6 are x plus 2 and x plus 3. Those ones we cancel out here, leaving you with x plus 1. So we now have uh, this will be equal to x plus 1, and then plus the next one, remember that our SCD. Let me write it here. It's x plus 1, and it is x plus 2, and it is x plus 3. That is the SED. You must not forget that. So after the first one, the second one plus this again, we cancel your x plus 1 and x plus 2, leaving you with x plus 3. Good. Now, let's simplify. This is the beauty of it all. x plus x is 2x, and then 1 plus 3 is 4. Beautiful all over your x plus 1 and then your x plus 2 and then your x plus 3. That is easy now. What do we do next? Look at the numerator. If you like, you can factorize that. But I think we should. So we now have 2 into x plus 2. Oh, and then what happens? All over x plus 1 and then x plus 2 and then x plus 3. How? Oh. So if a student has talked here, you would have missed the final point because x plus 2 and x plus 2 we cancel. And then the final result will now be equal to your 2 in the numerator all over your x plus 1 multiplying your x plus 3. What a beautiful solution. And that is how you should simplify this kind of uh, a given uh, fraction. Let's take a look at question number 10. That's example 10. Given that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1 and 4, calculate z if x is equal to 7 and the square root of y is equal to 3. Take note, the square root of y is equal to 3. What is our solution going to be? Our solution here is to substitute the given uh, uh, values. So substitution, if s is equal to 7, so we have 7 squared, 
and if y is equal to the square root of y, we are told in this case, is equal to 3. So now let's see. If the square root of y is equal to 3, therefore y will be equal to what? y will be equal to 3 raised to power 2, which is, I think we should take it like this again. Let's take it this way. Just pay attention. Now what we do here is that, first of all, we are told that the square root of y is equal to 3. Therefore, our y will be squaring both sides, 3 squared, and this is equal to 9. This, that is the best way to take, to approach it. So now that we know the value of y, we can take our s, s is 7, 7 squared, our y is 9, so we have 9 squared, and then plus z squared, everything is equal to 1 and 4. And so, this is your 49 plus your 81 plus your z squared, is equal to 1 and 4. Adding them together, we have 0, and then we have uh, 130, plus z squared is equal to 1 and 4. Therefore, our z squared is equal to 1 and 4 minus 130. And that will give you your 4 there, and this is 64. So if your z squared is equal to 64. What therefore is the value of z? It will be equal to, of course, the square root of 64, and this is equal to a plus or minus 8. Plus or minus 8. So if we're giving that this is equal to that, our z can be equal to plus 8 or minus 8. So therefore, z is equal to minus 8, or z is equal to minus 8. Now, we have just looked at our algebraic uh, simplifications and I said that there is a relationship between algebraic simplification and all defined functions. A function is said to be undefined or let's put it, uh, a fraction is undefined, a fraction is undefined if the denominator is equal to zero. The reason for this is because a division by a zero is undefined. So division by zero is undefined. Now, let's take for example, given f of s equal to 2s minus 4 all over s squared minus 2s minus 3 comma For what values of S is a function undefined? Solution. As I said earlier, our interest is to look at the denominator and express the denominator equal to zero. They find the values of x that will make the denominator to be equal to zero. In other words, we simply write x squared minus 2x minus 3, and this is factorized to become x, and then we have this, and then of course this is plus, because plus 1 times minus 3 will give you minus 3, plus 1 plus minus 3 will give you minus 2. So for this reason, we will equate this to 0. Equate this to 0. So summing this, s plus 1 equal to 0, or your s minus 3 is equal to 0. Quadratic equation. In this regard, our s here is minus 1, or our s is equal to 3. So if you substitute any of these values, s equal to minus 1, or s equal to 3, in the denominator, 
the denominator will be zero, and division by zero is undefined. So therefore, the answer s is equal to minus one, or s is equal to three. For these two values, the fraction is, or the function is undefined. Example number two, determine the values of p for which one all over p minus three minus 2p minus 3 all over 2p plus 3 into p minus 3 is not defined. As usual, the solution, any value in the denominator, if any of the value is undefined, the entire fraction is undefined. In other words, our p minus 3 is equal to 0, or our 2p plus 3, and then times our p minus 3, is equal to 3. In this regard here, our p here is equal to 3, or in this case here, our 2p plus 3 is equal to 0, or our p minus 3 is equal to 0. And then if we solve this, we have our p to be equal to minus 3 all over 2, or our p here is equal to, zero, equal to 3. Now if you observe this, therefore, the value of p that you make the expression to be all the pi is p is equal to minus 3 all over 2 or p is equal to 3. So these two values make the expression to be all the pi. Example number 3. For what values of y is the fraction y squared minus 3y plus 2 all over 3y minus 12 equals to 0? Our solution we write y squared minus 3y plus 2 all over 3y minus 12 equal to 0. We have equated it. Then we do multiply both sides by 3y minus 2, or what you want to say, cross and multiply. We will have y squared minus 3y plus 2 equal to 0 because a multiplication by 0 gives a 0 result. Now we will factorize the left hand side here, which will give you y minus 1. And then this is y also minus 2 is equal to 0. That is the factorization. Therefore, your y minus 1 is equal to 0. And then your y minus 2 is also equal to 0. Now, in other words, our y will be equal to 1 or our y will be equal to 2. These are the two values of y that made that expression or the fraction to be equal to zero.